All right, Shalom again. We had to segue into the prodigy part on the same disc, and we're on the same disc um, named uh, Truth May Scare You. And we're still on this subject matter that the so called Illuminati I is not genuinely or truly, in that sense, Egyptian. Even from the previous vid and another portion of this, this, uh, DVD right here, we showed you the the four or five different examples of how this um, resemblance that Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, we're still there, we're still in the scripture, Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6, the word resemblance, which is this is their resemblance, in the Hebrew it is the word oin or ayin, it's the word I. E A E Y E is the word I through all the earth. Now, the Metav Kedus of the King of Kings, the Book of the Seven Seals, tells us the Delacho, which means their wrongdoing. This is their wrongdoing. Now, remember, the main part of this is something called an Epha. Now, what is an Epha? What is an Epha? Well, we have this article here that is speaking about an honest. An honest effort. An honest effort. We find that an effort was a dry measure of about a bushel, often used to measure grains. So, in its basic application, it was a dry measure used to measure grains. So, we already see that within this particular prophetic scripture that's connected with the ten visions, it's first of all speaking of the effort. Now, those who have a Schofield Study Bible, Look at the footnote, and we'll read it for those who don't have a Schofield um, reference Bible handy, but they can go to the website www.lojsociety.org and download a PDF for free. It says right here, when, when, where in the scripture says, what is it? And I said, Zakaria said, what is it? Next to that what, there's a subscription one, and that's the footnote. It says, in the vision. So now we're seeing the Rai in the vision of the Epha. Local and prophetic elements are to be distinguished. These elements are an Epha or measure. So there's an Epha or there's a particular measure. Now we have to think about this even geometrically. There's an Epha or a certain measure. We showed you that on the back of the dollar that the angle of the pyramid on the back of the dollar, let's see if we get some light on this, the the angle of the pyramid back here, right, is not Egyptian, but it's Nubian, right? It's Nubian, or like the Sudanese pyramids. So there's a particular angle, and you can see that this also has that particular angle that's found on the back of on the back of the dollar. All right. So even the angle is different than Egyptian. But our first point is that you fail to find from ancient Egypt, Egypt archaeology or and Egyptology, a, a symbol where you see the, uh, according to ancient Egyptian, true Egyptian Kemite Chem culture, this sort of symbol like this. You see the eye is used as part of the language, linguistic system. Even in the Hebrew, we have the Ain and the Ethiopic, and that is known to represent the eye, even within our languages, the Afro-Shemitic. But it's not, it's not a picture but it's a symbol that represents almost like the sigils that we've been looking at in a lot of these videos about the Illuminati and showing us the symbology. Now, the scripture says right here that this is an effort. Now, this effort is a measure. Then it speaks of a woman in the effort. So what it's saying right here about the local and the prophetic um, elements, we have to first of all look at the, what an effort is. An effort is a measure. It's a measure of grain. Now, even this video is kind of interesting. You might roll it after after we do this right here and let you see the connection that is showing that a lot of the, the, the music videos, they're showing you almost like predictive programming for a time of like an Armageddon or end day time where like um, plagues will be coming and food prices and famine and starvation. They're kind of showing you these things are riot and revolution. Now, what's interesting is that an effort or a measure has a lot to do with this very same symbol, once again, um, the dollar bill. This is an honest effort. 
Now, what is an EFA? Well, according to this particular article, if we look at this dollar bill for a moment, the greatest magic probably in the whole world right now, we first of all learn that basically the seventh commandment is what? You shall not steal, Exodus 20 and 15. In addition to forbidding theft, this commandment acknowledges that people may own private property. That people, remember, this is coming from God, not from man. All right? Now, yet Scripture also counsels respect for others' property, for others' property, right? And points out the wrong motives that can produce theft, covetousness, and greed. And this is, a, this is the magic of it right here. And this particular symbol, although the pyramid is Egyptian, but that I there is not Egyptian, that I there is European, that I there is Gentile. And this is the whole point of this particular scripture. But the Beta Israel, the lost sheep, they play a role in this, even in their lost state. The Apostle James wrote, where do wars and fighting come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure, that war in your members? You lust and do not have. Remember the, 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 the scripture, First John, I think, 2, 15 to 16, where it speaks about, you know, the lust of the flesh, right? You know, um, it's people the lust that are in the world, that lust. To combat the wrong impulses of, of human nature or human nature that, that is cursed because of the, 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 the systemic anomaly or, or hat yat, sin, that systemic anomaly within human nature. Human nature originally was good, but in the present um, programming, your satanic programming or mind state, it's like it has a virus in it. God built honesty and integrity into his statutes in the scriptures. Here's a good example. You shall not do, you shall do no injustice in judgment. No injustice in judgment in measure of length, width, or volume. You shall have honest scales, honest weights, and honest effort. So you get that, an honest effort. In what sense? The effort is a measure of something. And an honest hen. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, Leviticus 19, verse 35 to 36. Now, we didn't mention a hen in this particular um, piece here, but a hen was a liquid measure of about two gallons. So we have the, the bushel, the dry um, grain, effa, and the two or so gallons liquid, a hint. Now applying the principle today would go beyond simply measuring out quantities of groceries or gasoline, but yet that's the application that you need to understand, that in the scripture time it's speaking about those same resources or necessities, so-called, of life, food, and enough currency to get enough food, so forth and so on, and doing your work and getting paid, so forth and so on. So applying that same principle today would go beyond simply measuring out quantities of grocery or gasoline. Our modern application of the just or unjust effort can involve how we measure out, out our labor. If we are on the job for eight hours, do we give our employers the eight hours of work they are paying for, not six hours worth in the same way. They didn't have this in the article, but I say this, that if one is working for eight hours, are they going to take home from that eight hours worth of wages and not have it taken by all these mischiefs in the law and the ignorance? God teaches his way, God's way teaches us to give people the full value we have promised them. This is godly and good business. Now, people say, well, what's wrong with the economy in America? It's only the chickens come home to roost, in a sense. You see what's happened with the economy after so many years of exploitation, slavery, no reparations. You know, we can go on and on. Not just us, but also other people are being hurt. The delacho in, in, in the mix, and this is their symbol. You know, and this is like their sign. Job plainly forbids the personal, the, the personal corruption that greed will foster. He did this because greed is alien. You know what I'm saying? Greed is, is an alien. It's like a virus to his character. However, he does not forbid his people from bargaining for a fair price and making a profit. You know what I'm saying? Bargaining for a fair price, also for a fair wage, too. 
But the, the system is so people wouldn't be and try to bargain if it was offered a job and bargain for it. Not not the average, you know, the average um, 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 folk, unfortunately. There is no biblical admonition against working for gain and engaging in productive enterprise to create wealth. We, so we need to understand that as well. In fact, there are dozens of biblical admonitions in both the Old Testament and the New Testament about how to gain wealth and to conduct commercial relationships in ways that help people become better employees and businessmen. Remember, having John's blessing is crucial to any enterprise. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, And you shall remember Yahweh Eloheka, the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. So we need to understand that. Many people mistakenly think that the Bible calls money the root of all evil. But that is not in Scripture. That is not Scripture. See, this is how cunningly Satan continues to deceive the world. People think the Bible says that money is the root of all evil. Rather, it is the love of money that is the chigar or is the problem. Consider the actual scripture, the metzhaf, that the Hawari of Alos, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Wangelawi Timotewos, the evangelist Timothy, quote, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, 1 Timothy 6 and 10. Now, John wants I and I. He wants us to prosper and to enjoy life in the right or the righteous way. The Apostle John, Johannes, he wished good things for his congregations, for his brothers and sisters. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, in tena, in health, as we say, tena yisteling, just as your soul prospers. Third epistle of John, chapter 2. But sadly for many, it's the pursuit of wealth, like right? so-called get rich or die trying um, spell. It brings evil rather than good and stress rather than enjoyment. Greed is insatiable. It's a bottomless pit. There's always a hunger for more. There's always more falling to go. And it makes the greedy into slaves of their wealth. Their wealth doesn't serve them. They are serving what they got rather than masters. Quote, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver, nor he who loves abundance with increase. This is vanity. Contuno, Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. By contrast, those who work hard and prosper in their labor in a right and balanced way can be blessed in doing so. Ecclesiastes 5 and 19 reads, As for every man to whom Jah has given riches and wealth and given him power to eat of it, to receive his heritage and rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of Jah. This is the gift of God. As a good father, our good Abba, Jah wants blessings for his children, and those blessings do not exclude prosperity. That's something that we need to understand. That has nothing to do, in other words, with this. This is just this is just fiat currency. Fiat mean let it be. It's like faith currency. That's what they call fiat currency. Fiat means amen. Basically let it be. Just let it be. So every time you accept this and use this and then what the video said in the first part, that if you wear the so-called this evil eye, or you display it, it said if you display this evil eye, whether willingly or unwillingly, you are what? You are, you are giving elite, you're worshiping or giving allegiance to Satan. Now think about that in connection with this. A lot of religious folks will be like, well, not me, because, you see, I don't believe it, but you're still using it. You still got to use it. You don't have a choice about it. You can't say, oh, I'm going to use gold or silver. I mean, you do have a choice about it, but you don't think you have a choice about it. And that's all part of the spell race right here. So I wanted just to get through that part. But I want to show you something else interesting. Remember, there's this woman in the effort, right? Play this a little bit. There's this woman in the effort, right? <laughs> Up by the corporation to become these big influences of, uh, of young 
people and other people through the entertainment and the music uh, industry, and others with incredible talent never get off the ground. It's because they are chosen. Let's see, okay, now this is interesting. This is Rihanna. Right? This is Rihanna right here. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Same thing with the eye. We're still on the Buddha eye, the evil eye. We're, we're so going to speak on the effa. Because this is their this is their eye. This is their eye. This is their resemblance. This is their wrongdoing. But remember, there's a woman, according to Zechariah chapter 5, as we move beyond their resemblance, their eye their wrongdoing, and he moves to verse 7, it says, And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead. There was lifted up a talent, a particular weight, a measure of lead, right? Of lead. And this is a woman. Now, you know, I was wondering, why was, why was she all metallic here? It says, and this is a what? Pause this right here. And this is a woman. This is a woman that sitteth in the midst of an effort. Now, as we back this up a little bit more, let's back this up right here. You're going to see something interesting right there. Boom. The woman is in the midst. Now, they have her painted what? This kind of silver-like. We could almost say it's lead. Right? She's painted lead. And she's in this, this pyramid. Right? This, this triangularity. Now, it's going to become interesting for us to look up, actually, if they have any pictures of, it, of any ancient ephors and look at some of the scales. It's like one part of the scale. You can see it, almost like a, a scale. As long as we look at the scale, it can look like that. And perhaps this is something that they used back in those times. We need to research that a little bit more. But how interesting is it that some of the elements of this ephor or measure is a woman in the effort. Then there's a sealing weight that's upon the mouth of the effort confining the woman, confining this woman, and the stork-winged woman. Notice in, in a lot of these uh, videos, we see they, they, they're doing this wing thing a lot in a lot of these videos. Now remember, there's a hidden element in Zechariah 5 and 6. Many of you all might have read through this and read right past it, their resemblance. Go look it up in the Schofield, the Masoretic, Blue Letter Bible, the Word Program, and go to this area of Scripture and click on the Masoretic. Look at the Hebrew for their resemblance, and you're going to find the word oin or I. And, and that is your so-called Illuminati I right there. That's, that's, that, this leads to one of the greatest mysteries and deciphering and overcoming of the Illuminati. You know, and this is why it was not translated here, but if you look in the Jewish, um, the Jewish, this might be why the Revelation speaks that way about some of those who call themselves Jews, because they know this, but shh, shifin sin, they keep quiet about it, but it's not for them. It's for the ones who lost, but are now found beta Israel. You know what this is, this is Christ's time is coming. Christ is the, Christ is the victor. Even in scripture, he's the victor. All the kingdoms of the earth become the kingdoms of our Lord, of Christ, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, the King of Kings, Christ in his kingly character. That is still to come, or that is what is happening. Everything is lining up for that. So there is this symbol. Now we have a woman, right? And it says a stark winged woman whose only function is to bear the effort. And woman away... It says, bear the effort and the woman away into Babylonia. So the only function right here is a stark-winged woman whose only function is to bear the effort and the woman away into Babylonia or the land of Shinar. You remember Shinar, Genesis chapter 11, ba Babylon's bankruptcy chapter, chapter 11? The thing thus characterized was, quote, through all the land, end quote. This thing is throughout all the land. Now, it's interesting because symbolically, 
a measure or a cup. We read about a cup, even in the in, in, in prophets and in Revelation, it's a cup, and the Lord has a cup in his hand, and he gives a cup to like Babylon, to this harlot, this whole symbol of, of, of mystery Babylon. Now, so there's a cup, right? And then we have in the world, there's the so-called pimp cup. Think about, check that out. And then we have the chalice, the holy grail, that whole connection. It stands for something which has come to the full. So that John must judge it. In other words, we come, what we're seeing, all that we're seeing, is because things are coming to the full when John must judge it. You understand? It's interesting how they talk in this particular song right here. You know, Masonic symbols everywhere. Their, their symbol is through all of the land, say all of the earth. So there's various scriptures that speak about how John must judge it, 2 Samuel 8 and 2, Jeremiah 51 and 13, Habakkuk um, 3, verses 6 and 7, Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 7, verse 2, and chapter 23, verse 32. Now, a woman now, in this sense of scripture, especially prophetically, now she is, here's Rihanna in this, in this, uh, Herman, right? And you notice how she's painted with this. You, you know why? And this video also got a lot of attention, both for those who are seeking to try to figure out what sort of magic, you know, is going on here. You understand? But it was intended for it to get this sort of attention. You understand? Because we're in a, a certain time. Like, everyone has seen this and in some way, for or against, have been affected by it. But a woman here in the bad ethical sense, in the bad ethical sense, to say in the bad moral sense, is always a symbol of that which religiously, in a religious way, is out of its place. So when we're reading scripture and we see that a woman may be the symbology used, and it's in a bad sense, a bad ethical sense, moral sense, the symbol is to be understood, you understand? as um, in a religious, some, something that is religiously out of its place, or she is religiously out of her proper place. So she's like in harlotry. She is worshiping, worshiping the beast, or Satan, right? Uh, Satan is her Baal, in other words. Now, the woman in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, is dealing with doctrine. This woman here in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, is dealing with teaching, doctrine. And this is a, a sphere that's forbidden to her. It's, it's forbidden to her. That's a sphere that's forbidden to her. First Timothy 2 and 12. The law is of the mother, but not the Timhetic, not the doctrine. I understand that. In Thyatria, in Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, a, a, a woman is suffered to teach, right? A woman is suffered to teach. Now, the Babylon phase of the apostate church, you can say the Romanist church, but now it's come forward even to the present church and the church world today, is symbolized by an unchaste woman. And, you know, like in other words, a, a woman that has no chastity, she's a whore, she's a slut, or, you know, those kind of, um, appellations are given even by women of women who are unchaste. Sodden, but notice this, in the scripture it, it's pointing to us that she is sodden, like soaked with the greed and the luxury of commercialism. Notice what's happening, even a lot of these videos here, they're videos for a song, but it's also commercial, a lot of products, and everybody has their logo, and they all have the same kind of symbology which we read right here, that this is their resemblance to all the earth. But there's a, there's a woman symbology. Now, we're not saying that Rihanna is the only, she's the only one, this, this woman here. But she's just in the image. She's just, just another one in a long line of, 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 of um, you can say, mind control of those who willingly or unwillingly have, have, have um, taken a covenant, what the Bible calls a, a, a death covenant. You know what I'm saying? Because unless there's some repentance, it leadeth to not just death in this world, which is a lot for, they say, all, but death in the life to come. Now, there's a local application. 
Now, Zechariah's ninth vision is therefore evident. The Judahites, the black Hebrews then in the land, had been in captivity in Babylon. Outwardly, they had put away idolatry. But they had learned in Babylon that insatiable greed of gain. Is this what niggas have, have been learning in this Babylon phase of the captivity? They're learning that insatiable greed of gain. Dollar, dollar, bill, yo. Cash rule everything around them. Right? Nehemiah 5, 1 to 9, Malachi 3 and 8. That intense commercial spirit which had been foreign to Israel. If you look at black people in America and you look at their history, this, this phase that we're in right now is something foreign. You, you, and we're not talking about prosperity. We're talking about this insatiable greed for gain and materialism. It's really foreign to the true, to our true identity. But then we're not in our natural self. We're in the artificial 13th, 14th Amendment, Negro, black, and colored person. So that, 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 that is already a product, being the artificial state your, or status. So that intense commercial spirit which had been foreign to Israel, and we can also, for those Ethiopians who are concerned about ministering to the Ethiopians at home and abroad, this is the same thing that y'all going through too with the Kala Kidan, the covenant. You understand? Because the same thing that applies in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, also apply to the careless Ethiopians who are or of that Al Kidan, that covenant. So this commercial spirit, right, insatiable greed of gain, is, is a foreign mind. Like in Rastafari and Reggae and Roots, we say, like, about the foreign mind. That's the foreign mentality, like a mind control. It's a foreign mind to Israel as a pastoral people. This is one reason why we talk about reparation or repatriation. It's like we've been so caught up on this, this, this shitty life, I mean city life, that one thing about living in the country where the air is fresh and the food is good and everything, it, 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 it's, it's one who say, yes, I want that, but then there's these obstacles here to recognize how we have, our garments have been defiled and how we must start here and start now to wash our garments in the blood of the Lamb. But which was therefore word to characterize them through the ages. So this kind of nature was to be characterize us through the ages. These things were out of place in God's people and land. These things, so that's why I said don't worry about the, the so-called neo-colonialism, a lot of that stuff that's going on in Ethiopia right now. When everything is said and done, either they will agree with our righteous covenant and terms if we decide to give them any, or we just have a whole bunch of new tractors and equipment and so forth and so on. They don't want a war against God and our brothers from other planets. They don't want that. You understand? But first things first, my, my people. First things first. So the first thing to understand this right here, these things were out of place for God's people and land. Symbolically, he judged them as belonging to Babylon, to Babylon, and sent them there to build a temple. They could have no part of his. No, if you don't, he exiled them. They can go far and go abroad and do whatever in the land of the Gentiles. But this is one of the reasons why we say, well, how come more of us don't think about Africa in this age of globalism, what we know, what we learn, and how we have a, a different moral sentiment from what we've experienced, that we can really help our African brothers and sisters on the continent and really bring prosperity. Why aren't we doing this? Because we have to wash our garments. You know what I'm saying? We have to recognize where we're at in this valley of the dry bones, the skull and bones. So the woman was to be set there upon her own base. This is what the scripture says in, in, in um, verse 11. It was Yahweh's moral judgment, moral theocracy, his moral judgment upon Babylonism, Babylonism in his own land and people. So, you know, folks talk about what's happening in Ethiopia in particular. Listen, that land will spit you out. It will spit you out. And it will spit them out too. You understand? Know Especially when the righteous people, when the kith and kin of the father and son rise up. You understand? Know Prophetically, the application to the Babylon of Revelation is obvious. The professing Gentile church at that time, condoning every iniquity of the rich, 
doctrinally a mere confusion. This is like what's happening now with the church world. They condone every iniquity of the rich. And, and according to their doctrine, what they're preaching, keep leaving Christ hanging on the cross and not picking up their cross, recognizing he's the, he's the resurrected and ascended Adonis. You know what I'm saying? There's a mere confusion of Babylon, as the name Babylon indicates. And they corrupt it, they're corrupt to the core, like I say, bad to the bone, by commercialism, wealth, luxury, and they fall under the judgment of Jah. And this is Revelation chapter 18. See, this is how significant this area of Scripture that points out this I. You understand? That points out this I is. So here we have Rihanna looking like the woman, uh, like the lead woman, so to speak. You understand? It looks like, it's, it looks like she's coated, you understand, coated with lead. What is that, a spinal column of some sort? No, that's the front part, but it looks like some bones up there. All this subliminal suggestion. Now, Macy goes a little bit deeper in this, and what we're going to do is let's forward this at a, at, at a little lively pace. Let's forward this and get to the second time that she's in the, the pyramid. This is one time right here, right? She's in this. This is that woman, the woman in the Epha. Now, Rihanna just demonstrates it. We'll see it in other videos where they do this very same thing, the entertainment industry. We don't, I don't even think maybe this is her own kind of idea and how the fingers up there is she doing that you know that El Canudo thing most likely you know saying does she know well, who knows you know saying willingly or unwillingly you can worship the Satan willingly or in ignorance you know saying hopefully ones will be called to repentance and do the right thing you know saying um, so we see her now in this silver this silver thing right here right Right, and this silver now it also speaks to what's happening with the corruption of 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 the feminine nature, not saying that the male nature hasn't become corrupt and that's what's also allowing the more corrupt the male nature becomes it it, it kind of is not a protection the male no longer protection for the woman, so the woman is vulnerable, and you know it's easier to point out the woman's old family structure. You understand? Know Slick woolly lynchism on a certain level. But here's here's the pyramid right here, the woman in the ephah. I think this demonstrates this part of scripture very, very well here because if you go to verse eight it says, And he said, This is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. So he cast this weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Or in some impression that in her mouth, that, that lead is going to have to stop this mouth. You understand? And you all know what kind of mouth we're talking about, right? Then lifted I up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came out two women. So two women now came out. So we see this pairing going on also in the entertainment industry, um, such as the music among the so-called uh, divas or uh, Deanna's in a sense and the wind was in their wings so we see this we see that in a lot of these videos I think Beyonce also got some vids where she wearing some wings and stuff like that and Gaga and all this Google Gaga for they had wings like the wings of a stork notice what it's saying not the wings they didn't have wings like the wings of the eagle <laughs> or even a seagull you know what I'm saying? They had, well, actually, a wing like a stork, not an eagle. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Notice, notice what's happening in this vision. They're lifting up this ephah. Now remember, the ephah has an eye in it. There's an eye connected with it. You know what I'm saying? The ephah is connected with this triangularity right there. But the eye, Egyptian eye in a pyramid, is strictly... Non-Egyptian is basically what happened after the native rulers, after the, after the Hebrews, after the Israelites, after the, the non-native rulers came in after the other nations, namely Babylon. So you see the Babylon connection and the Syrian, uh, Syrian connection is very important with it. And you know, Syria, Syria is in the news, which is very, very, remember all these things are happening simultaneously in this present time. And we are seeking to do our part to testify to it and to to, 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 to warn our brothers and sisters and, 
show them the scriptures so they can learn and know the truth for themselves. Verse 10 says, Then said I to the Melach, to the angel that talked with me, Where do these bear the ephah? In other words, these two women with these stark like wings, where are they bearing this ephah to? Verse 11. It only has 11 verses to this chapter, which is the flying roll or the flying scroll. And he said to me, to build it an house in the land of Shinar, the land of Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. Here's the interesting thing is, you know this whole terrorism, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda thing? You know what Al-Qaeda means in Arabic, Al-Qaeda. Gaida. You know what Al Gaida means? It means the base. This is kind of very interesting. And now they went to Babylonia and they have military bases there. And all these things are happening. You see it almost simultaneously. It's like it's like a perfect conspiracy. Now, there's a couple of quotes from Macy's book that I wanted to put in since I have this this freeze frame of Rihanna in this triangle. I think that it, it, this can be used to kind of explain some of the areas of Macy's book, A Book of the Beginning. And he goes into this part about the ephah, even with a better Egyptian connection. That an ephah, remember, ephah is the grain. And he explains to us that the ephah is the hept or the hotep, the grain, the grain offering, or what some would say would be the bloodless will be the bloodless um, offering, right? The bloodless offering. Now, let's go back to um, page, there's a woman that's called wickedness, right? There's a woman who's called wickedness. Now, this woman who's called wickedness, let's not get it confused with these, um, these uh, lost, you know, entertainers and people and some of them, you know, mind control slaves and others out there. You know, whether Rihanna's one of them or not, whether she knows willingly or unwillingly. We're not speaking about these. These are just symbols. These are just like mannequins, like 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 um, circus, you know, circus entertainers in a sense for the New World Order on that sort of a level. Now, the oracle of verse 68, I mean, chapter, excuse me, chapter 68 of uh, a book of the beginning. And now this is this particular book right here. Let's get some light on it. Is this particular book published by the Society? And this is this is Volume Two, all right. So it's Volume Two, a book of the beginning. You can go to our website, and if you want to order copies, it's a fairly it's a fairly thick, as you can see, fairly thick book. And I want to share with you some of the notes right up in here, right, right up in here. Um, as you can see, this right here, you can see where it says the oracle as mouthpiece of the deity figured. On the a foot, the a foot was the the feminine sim symbol, the moot or the mother mouth. This was the same image as that of the woman who sat in the middle of the ephah. Remember, the ephah is to measure the bushels. So something about that size would be used to measure. If you look at it, you know the bushels. So I'll read it from over here while you see this this symbolic logic right here. So the woman who sat in the midst of the ephah called wickedness, whose resemblance was all through the earth. Macy probably didn't, didn't get that part right there because he, he's, he's, he's a very good researcher. But now we know that word resemblance is I. Now imagine how much could have been made off of the I. In, in other words, the symbolic logic. But it's not an Egyptian. It's not an indigenous Egyptian or Ethiopic symbology to put the eye in a triangle. I mean, I just have not, I've not seen it in an ancient Egyptian art. What you think is Egyptian, that's what they make for the Taurus. That's part of the Illuminati right there. That's basically their, their jacking it and, and making it for themselves, you know, and doing it for themselves. Thinking they're probably making it better, but better for themselves. On account of this similitude, the mouth being the same symbol in Epha, or ephod. So epha and ephod, if you look at the ephod. You know, what they're trying to demonstrate is that the feminine mouth is not talking about her upper mouth, as you understand. It's talking about almost like the matrix. 
the womb. A type of a a type of a womb. So we're talking about ritual here too. A kind of a being born again but in a different you know, this whole metallic people, you know, like half robot, half human being that a lot of these artists are doing and now they're going to the next level, the hybrid and it's so interesting because the scripture already has them there. You understand our Ethiopic manuscripts, whether it's Adam and Eve, whether it's the Kibbutz and the Guest, whether it's the, the Bible, the Old Testament, New Testament. You know, when you really study this word, it brings the word to life. But here we're speaking about the weight of lead was cast upon the mouth thereof to dam it up. When the earlier worship had been cast out as horseship. So it's an interesting point that Macy is saying here. These these so called ancient modern things coming back around were already they, they this is not the first time that we experienced it, so we can find some ancient relationship to it. You understand know that there was an ancient worship, but when that worship was like when people got conscious, in other words, even in ancient times, and moved past this sort of um, um, satanic bondage. You know what I'm saying? That, that bondage to symbology and not overstand, like the exoteric, not overstand the esoteric, the real truth of it. They cast that out. Now, there's another quote he goes into, you know, about the, the Keba or the Kaaba. We're not going to go there just yet, but in the next video, um, some others have actually touched on the whole sacred geometry and the geometrical connection. We're going to go to page 278 right now, just while we have the symbology in front of us. So you can make that connection, do the research on your own so you recognize that resemblance in Zechariah chapter 5 and 6 is I. So that means this is their I. That connects now with that whole Illuminati so-called I. Now, here on page 278, this actually goes into some good details, you understand, concerning Joshua the high priest. That's who is being spoken of here in Zechariah, Yasu, Yeshua, as the high priest. Now, we know that Yeshua, Jesus Christos, is I and I high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Edek. And it's interesting what is going on right here, which seems to be um, representative of this very time. So I think I'm just going to go through it, so just bear with me and listen up. It is evident from page 277 on the Moses and Joshua. It is evident to me that Joshua, the high priest who stood before the angel of the Lord, with Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. When one Jehovah, Yahweh, said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Yahweh that hath chosen Jerusalem, belongs to the same imagery as that in Jude where the contention between the angel and Satan is over the body of Moshe, of Musa, the body of Moses. The contention here is over the body or person of Joshua or Yeshua, the, quote, brand plucked out of the fire, end quote. This may be noted in passing as an illustration of the identity claim for Moses and Joshua on on the ground of their being the Mao and Shu of Egypt, of true Egypt. The transformation of Joshua Yeshua in this scene is the parallel of the change when Shu, the son of Nun, Shu, the old star god of the first time, that is the time of Kepha, the Typhonian goddess of the seven stars, is translated to become the son of Ra or the Sara, the Hebrew Jah, the solar god. He had served Typhoon or Satan before, hence the filthy garments that you read about in this section of, of Zechariah. He's wearing the filthy garment. And then he's told to, to take that, to, well, they're told to put on fresh garment on him. So hence he has the filthy garments. In other words, our, our, our garments stained by the flesh, which you find also in, um, in, in, I think, the book of Jude as well. You find that part there. And Typhon, or Zaphon, Typhon, still claims him as a servant and contends for him with the Melach, the angel, the representative of the time cycle. So here he's saying this angel that 
that Joshua, uh, Zachariah in the story, and Joshua is also the main character while Zachariah is one having the vision, that there's an angel, and this angel is a representative of a time cycle. Like we're moving 2012 with a particular time cycle. Now Joshua's iniquity is to pass away, and he is to be clothed anew and be crowned with the what's called in the Hebrew the the Sinis, the Sinis. That is to judge with the Egyptian tes or the tes, the the tie, the coil, the envelope, and the neb or the noob the gold, to have a crown of gold put on his head and become the image of the crown Cepheus or Cepheus or Cepheus, which is Shu in the planisphere. Now those who know even a little bit about that, that Cepheus or Cepheus is linked with Ethiopia and Andromeda. So it's kind of interesting there as, as well. Now previous to this change made visible in the extent imagery, Shu had worn on his head the kept, or what's called the hinder part of the lion, a type of tafun. Remember it says we will be the head, not the tail, when we, we disobey it's like we'll be the tail, so the hinder part, which is the north, the great bear, the motherhood, right, the motherhood. This was his beastly garment, now to be changed by Adoni, or the Lord. Now Joshua is henceforth to walk in the new ways and keep the new statutes of the sun god or the true god. In other words, we'll say in the, in the Bible, New Testament, we'll say God the Father. In other words, he and his fellows who are said to be symbolical men, like symb symbolical men or, or types, like divine living types, in other words, like when you see his majesty, when you have eyes to see, you see Christ, but yet it's still his majesty. You know what I'm saying? He's a symbolical man. The branch is called the repa, right? The solar, the young solar divinity is to be brought forth and placed in charge of Joshua. Now, here's where it connects with the symbol that you've been watching and seeing on the screen right there, that the stone with the seven eyes, the seven eyes of the feminine Jehovah. You say, what? The feminine Jehovah? Don't have any time to go into it right here. You understand? Um, I'll say trust Jah. You understand? If you could trust me, trust me, but go and study it for yourself. The stone of Typhon, the stone of Typhon is to be re-engraved by the male God. Quote, I will now engrave the engraving thereof. This is from scripture. Look it up. It's in this chapter here. It's in this um, book here. The woman is called wickedness. With all her symbols is to be cast out. So it's speaking about what is the overcoming of all of this. She who sat in the midst of the ephah in a certain emblematic figure. She who sits. Now that she's sitting in the midst of the ephah, right, in the midst of the ephah, she's a certain emblematic figure. This mouth was to be stopped with a weight of lead. The ephah in Egyptian is called the hept, or some will say the hetep, the hept, either H-E-P-T or H-E-T-P. Both are actually um, correct or found in the monuments. The word also signifies the seven. So the word hept, which is the Egyptian of Epha or the Eif. We call it the Eif, Bamarinya, the Eif, right? The Eif. In Egyptian, the hept. And in the Hebrew, the Epha. The word also signifies seven. It signifies an ark. It signifies, now get this with this picture of Rihanna in this video right here. It signifies a shrine. It signifies a measure. So the ephah was the image of the iniquitous through all the earth. And thus we have this Illuminati symbol on the dollar bill, the eye and all of that, and this so-called counterfeit eye of Ra or Ra. You understand? And Ra actually means evil in Hebrew. When you see R-A, it's not pronounced as Ra, it's pronounced as Re. So think about that. Ra. In Hebrew, means evil. Array is the one that they should have been saying, which is the 
the true one is re, the counterfeit one is ara'a, because the ara'a is the evil. I mean, go check it out for yourself, you understand? Check it out for yourself. So the effer was the image of the iniquitous here, through all the earth. But one thing that Macy missed, and many have missed, because so far we've been looking around, a lot of folks haven't really made that connection there, because you can only see that from a Judaic perspective, if you if you over what I'm saying. You know, because that's it's found in the Masoretic. So all these folks talking about the Masoretic, they missed the part, and that part about the Illuminati eye, and this symbol of the woman in the effort is Zechariah, excuse me, Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 6. So this portion right here, this portion right here, now there's a, there's maybe one or two other parts here I just want to share with you. But this is leading to when she's cast out, that's when a new temple can be built. You know what I'm saying? In other words, this must be overcome in order for a new temple to be built. Because in the new temple, furthermore, we find in Macy's work that is built by Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel means the Zeru of Babel or the seed from of Babylon, right? Of Babel or the seed of the door or the seed at the door of God. This is the proper translation of it. In which Shu or Joshua was to serve the soul of God or God the Father. These are the two anointed ones of the two golden pipes which fed the sevenfold lamp of light, the two anointed ones that stand by the solar sun as the Adoni of the whole earth, or the Kul, the Kol Ha'are, who is identified with the number seven as the Savek Ray, the Savek Ray on the Typhonian line of descent and on the side of the mother who was now to be cast out as wickedness. The mother, number mo Babylon is a what? She's in scripture. Babylon is a mother. And you wonder why she gets burnt by fire? Because if you go to Leviticus, if a priest's daughter commits harlotry, the priest's daughter shall be burnt by fire. So Babylon, being a church, and in that churchical, ecclesiastical kind of state, as a church, she is saying she's a daughter of God. You understand? But look how she has turned her back on God, how she has apostated herself. So this woman of wickedness area in scripture right here, as well as a lot of the Jezebelism that's going on in the music and how that is, that is having a negative um, effect on, um, on, on women, on girls, on motherhood, destroying the family. The real keys are in the scripture. You understand the real keys to this, the half of the story, is in the scripture. So we just want to share a little bit of that. We're still working on other elements of this. But check it out. The word resemblance in Zechariah chapter 5 and 6 is, in the Hebrew, it's the word on. It's the word I. In the Amharic, it's the word wrongdoing. Then look at the context of, you know, of the scripture. And it will become very much more clear. Now, when we recognize this effort, this woman called wickedness, her resemblance, her eye. You understand? This is her eye. It's, it's interesting because the part about Mecca that it went into, remember that, that, that part that they kissed, that stone? And you see how it looked like an, over, an oval, in a sense? You understand? It's like a womb. It's like an eye. And if you, if you, if you, it's like a cave, a hole. Because Keba is the genitalia... Um, Motavria, I think, a pleasure chamber is a vault of, of heaven in the Hebrew, the, the Kaaba, the Keba, the Keba, right? And this is the primitive type of the Kaaba of the Muslims at Mecca. It's the feminine abode. It's a feminine dwelling place, right? It's a feminine dwelling place. It's, it's related to the belly. It's related to the womb, and we know the word womb and belly, or the word womb in the scriptures, is matrix. It's right there in the King James Bible, referring to the womb. So now we have this further connection. It's a cave. It's a hole in the earth. It can also be a tomb. So in a lot of these videos, you see this symbology of a cave, a tomb, all these very things of which the definition of the primary words 
reflect. So this was a place, notice this, this was a place of divination. Divination occurred in these, it's almost like a sacred square of another type, if you, if you, if you can understand it, comprehend that. A place of divination founded on the oracle of the womb founded on the very same oracle, the word of the womb. Now, Isaiah, he speaks of these kabirs, right, which is the, which is the kabir, the kabir, you know, the, the kabirs or the, or the, the, um, 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 the burial places, right, who, and, and there were these individuals who sit at, in the grave vault. They sit in the grave vault and they seek declarations concerning the future. Could this be what they are projecting in these sort of video clips? They're projecting declarations that they got through some divination similar to what you're looking at, the woman in the effort, you know what I'm saying, concerning the future, you know what I'm saying, um, the abode of, 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 of demons. Now, the origin, you know, the origin of, of this, it links now with what we have in the Bible. And in the Bible, we have a, a sequence that sometimes is not understood. Now, we're on, we're on page 160, 169 of Book 2, of Macy's Book 2. Where once, and we're just trying to explain this, the, some, of the, some of the connections with this one symbology and, and give you some of the references of this as well because Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter um, uh, 60, uh, I think it's 65, and um, 65 and 4, Isaiah speaks of the Kabirs who sit at the grave vault or the, 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 the Kabirim, the Kabirim, right? And they seek declarations concerning the future in the abodes of demons. So they're in the, an abode of demons and they're seeking declarations about the future. This origin gives appropriateness to what's known in the in the scriptures as the the kibrot uh, hat ira hat avia hat awa but the Jews say hat ava the 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 kibrot hat ava you understand um the graves of lust know that word lust how it connects with the some of the scriptures point out here in second well, no first John um, first John was that two and I think two and fifteen, two and fifteen to sixteen. But the scripture points out concerning lust, and lust is covetousness, a desire, an inordinate desire. You know, one have desires, but one have to keep them, regulate them. When you allow them to go unregulated, that's where it leads to this lust, greed, and you do anything to satisfy that demon. Because demons torturing you, because you know um, the keb, the cob, or the cave represented the secret abode, the abode of the kepha, which is the Typhonian genetrix of the matrix. Now, kep in ancient Egypt is a concealed place, a religious sanctuary. Kab means to give birth to in the birthplace, symbolized by the hinder thigh, the back thigh. Notice what she's lifting up, the back. Thigh. Notice what we look at and what we're programmed to look at with the woman, the back thigh. It's the, that is the hinder part. That is, you look at the ancient Egyptians and say, oh, they, they worshipped the, 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 the thigh. And you now understand what, they, what, what they're worshipping, the hinder part, the back side, the thigh. The, the, don't you get it just yet? What, what part of the chicken you want? Notice, you see, this is, it's a programming, but it's an ancient program. So the, the cob means to give birth to the birthplace symbolized by the hinder, the hinder thigh, the kept, the kept. This is the Hebrew gob for the back or the henward part. This is why with sodomy and buggery also kind of comes in this whole connection, the henward, the back part. It is applied to the typical mount of the north, the high place, the eminence of the, fe of the female cult. In the margin, the gob is rendered the brothel house. So in the margin of some expositors, they put the gob, the cob, the gob, is rendered the brothel house. On account of its primitive simplicity 
as the image of the Gaborot or the Gavrit. In Hebrew today, they say Gavrit to say like man in Hebrew, madam, Gavrit. But in, in ancient Hebrew, with the Gaborot, the Gaborot, right? The, like to say Imabate, so to speak, right? That's the mistress. But in the Bible, this is the lady of kingdoms, the queen of heaven. And notice after they killed in, in the Illuminati cult um, um, Whitney, they immediately wanted to make her like a queen up there in heaven. Notice how quickly they had it all planned in a sense. People barely could stop mourning before they said, we, she's, we must make her the queen of heaven. Like, what? What's going on? So there's a, there's a whole feminine cult. And we're beginning to see some signs of it with so-called black women, you understand, and, and Latino women, you know, um, really, really um, um, becoming, in a sense, enemies to society or predators and of the gangs and taking on this maleness, this, this cultness where uh, it's trippy, but the Bible, we've been here before, in other words. Well, I'm trying to show you this. We've been here before. And if we want to get out of this or overcome this, we got to learn about what happened when we already been here before. And the best, um, what they said, the best techniques, tactics, and procedures that worked to get humanity out of this state before. More people do what they think of all entertainment. This is for nothing more than their entertainment. It never ever was that case. What we see here is that this is actually all based up into psychological warfare done by military intelligence wrapped up with the cultists. See right there? Just go back. Just go back right there. Check that. Check that right there. As I said, not just the animal. warfare done by military intelligence wrapped up. Right there, you see? Once again, the woman's in the A file. She's standing. No, she's standing in the A file. Maybe that, you know, if you study that a little deeper. And then you can see the other pyramid over here, the downward one, which is a, there's a whole different uh, symbology is very interesting. Let's just go like that. But this is another image of in this pyramid. Even the one where, who was it? Little Kim. Remember Little Kim when she was squatting? That squatting position. I think I did it in another video of her and and Nicki Minaj, Nicki Minaj, or you know, Nicki Minajerie. I don't know, but she was. They kind of had them a battle between them and so forth and so on. Who can represent? You understand? Who can represent um, Babylonia best? You know, some kind of crazy kind of stuff like that. But a little more of this, and we'll conclude this. But this video is very interesting. Check it out if you get a chance. Um, the truth may scare you, you understand? Or it might confirm a reality and just help you in watching and, and getting prepared.